Hello everyone, welcome to VMware Arena YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to see a top 7 features which we will be missing it from vSphere 7.0. It means there are some features which exist in the previous version of vSphere, which means vSphere 6.5 or 6.7, which we will be no longer available or using it from vSphere 7.0. So out of that, I have picked up top, top 7 features which we will be missing it from vSphere 7 and the later versions. So this video is very special to me because it is my 50th video. Thank you so much for uh, support. So if you are watching uh, our channel for the first time, please do subscribe to the channel to support us and also to get the notification about the new videos which I am posting in the channel. So let's get started. I'll talk about uh, uh, one by the features one by one. Um, so here we are going to discuss about seven features which we will be missed it from vSphere 7.0 and later version. Let's get started. So the first feature which we are going to miss is Windows vCenter Server. So in the earlier version, uh, we have an uh, until 6.7, we have a Windows vCenter Server. But the problem with Windows vCenter Server is you, you have an additional operating system, which is Windows operating system. You have to manage it for uh, separately for a vCenter Server application. Also, you have to, you need a separate management for your, uh, you know, like Windows operating system, patching all these things. There will be administrative overhead, right? So uh, starting from, I remember 6.5 or 6.7, uh, VMware has started uh, telling about the vCenter and a server uh, based out of Windows will be depreciated soon. They are already recommended to migrate it from Windows to vCenter server appliance. So with the 7.0, we only have vCenter server appliance. So here is an uh, between the download page of 6.7 and 7.0. In the left side, I have a 6.7 U3G download page. Uh, vCenter server download page. I still have a vCenter server uh, download available for Windows. But in the 7.0, we no longer see a Windows uh, vCenter server downloads. We will only have an appliance. So with 7.0, we are going to miss Windows-based vCenter servers. So what if, if you are already running a Windows-based vCenter server? Whether you are not able to upgrade to 7.0? No. So let's talk about um, how can we migrate your Windows vCenter server to an appliance-based vCenter server? So you can migrate your existing Windows-based vCenter server to the vCenter server appliance. For that, you just uh, download the vCenter server uh, 7.0 installer. You have an option uh, to install, upgrade, migrate, and restore. To migrate from a Windows vCenter server to the vCenter server appliance, we have to use the migrate option. So it will help, to, help us to migrate an existing Windows-based vCenter server uh, vCenter server appliance based. So if you select the migrate option, so you get an option, right? So it talks running on Windows based uh, uh, vCenter server. Uh, so we have to run something called migration assistant. So you can see before starting with the migration process, make sure you have backed up all the data and have started the migration assistant on the source vCenter for the Windows. So what you need to do is basically you have to download the vCenter server installer on your Windows vCenter as well. And the, in the installer uh, directory, you have to run the, uh, you know, like a migration assistant, which is a command line tool, which helps us to uh, migrate our Windows based vCenter to the vCenter server appliance. So this is the uh, vCenter server uh, a screenshot taken from the vCenter server installer, which is on the vCenter server Windows server. So, uh, so you, in the in the installer, you will find a directory called Migration Assistant. So inside that, there will be an application called VMware Migration Assistant. You and it will open up the command prompt, something like that, and it will ask you the. It will automatically delete the local uh, vCenter server installation. It asks the credentials and some of the input, what kind of data you want to migrate it. So you have to enter all these things. Then at the end of that, you can see waiting for migration to start. Once that task is uh, ready in the vCenter migration assistant, so you can use the vCenter installer, and it will take care of uh, uh, deployment of new vCenter appliance, and it will start migrating migrating uh, the data from your Windows vCenter and it will power off the old Windows based vCenter server and everything will be migrated to uh, vCenter server based appliance. Okay, so this is a simple procedure. I wrote a detailed article uh, how to migrate your Windows uh, 
based v center server to the v center server appliance i'll just uh, put the link in the description and also in the i card you can click on that and you can read the article for the detailed information and second feature which we are going to miss is vSphere web client. So this is also from the previous version. Uh, VMware has already um, uh, notified us that the vSphere uh, web client will be depreciated in the future release. So here is the difference between, uh, uh, you know, like when you try to access the vCenter server uh, 6.7, the left side you can see we have both uh, vSphere uh, client which is based on HTML5 and we have a web client which is already noticed as depreciated. In the 7.0, the web web client has been completely removed we only have html5 client so in the right side you can see that i'm trying to access a vcenter server it only gives the option of vSphere client which is based out of html5 so in 7.0 we we will be missed vSphere web client and third feature which we are going to miss in vSphere 7.0 is external pse deployment pse is a platform service controller so in the earlier version uh, until 6.7 we have when we de when we deploy and we send a server we have a two deployment option one is like embedded platform service controller so that the both platform service controller and vcenter server will be deployed in a single virtual machine or the second one is like an external platform uh, services controller so if if you are using external platform service controller so we have to deploy our platform service controller pscvm first and vcenter server will be deployed in a, a separate virtual machine so there will be a two virtual machine you have to manage it for your vcenter server um, from starting from 7.0 also they already uh, when you deploy it they mention like this is a depreciated deployment model using it from external platform service controller so here is an in the right side you can see the uh, vcenter 7.0 installer so there will be a no deployment type option the default will be like i embedded uh, vcenter server so that the pse and uh, a vcenter server will be on uh, in the embedded uh, deployment model so what if if you already have an external psc uh, deployment model in your vcenter server right so we can perform on convergence basically the your external platform service controller can be converged and deployed to an embedded vcenter server so let's talk about how can we use that so this convergence can also be performed using your vcenter server 7.0 installer so you can use an option called upgrade so basically this will help you to upgrade your existing vcenter server appliance uh, which is an embedded model or it will help you to upgrade and converge your existing vcenter server with an external platform service controller so this is a simple step so you know like uh, there will be a um, when you click on next in the upgrade option it will tell it will notify us that uh, you know like if it is an external platform con service controller it will be automatically converged to the vcenter with an embedded platform service controller so you you have to proceed with the next and provide the your uh, source appliance details and everything so this upgrade procedure will automatically converge and it take care of uh, uh, you know like uh, deploy uh, changing your external psc to an embedded psc deployment model so we are going to miss an external psc deployment model in vsphere 7.0 and next one is update manager so see everyone aware so update manager we use update manager to perform an upgrade esxi upgrade we perform esxi patching even vmware tools upgrade and hardware upgrade and some of the third party softwares like multipathing software some manageability software some drivers we used to install it from update manager with 7.0 vmware has completely uh, renamed the update manager and it is renamed and they, they introduced on lifecycle manager because so uh, managing an esxi lifecycle is an, uh, a little uh, tricky task right so um, in the earlier version if you want to manage if you want to apply an uh, firmware updates to the esxi host it is uh, we have to use an external uh, uh, hardware management platform something like uh, dell open manager or uh, hp open view to apply the firmware of uh, esxa hardware right now everything has been brought into a single control using lifecycle manager we can perform esxa upgrade esxa patching 
as well as uh, firmware and driver upgrade for your ESXIOS. So this can be uh, done with the integration of third party softwares like Dell Open Manage can be integrated to the vCenter server and firmware and all the hardware management including your uh, uh, HCL uh, validation, your hardware compatibility validation, everything can be performed from Lifecycle Manager. So Lifecycle Manager is introduced with a lot of features. We'll talk about little more about Lifecycle Manager. Uh, as I said, we can upgrade now firmware and driver uh, can be performed from vSphere Lifecycle Manager. So if we have something called Decide State Model. You can create an uh, uh, image for your cluster, which includes your ESXi uh, upgrade pa uh, bundle and uh, our patching bundle uh, drivers, which includes your firmware, and you can apply that particular desired state uh, image, a single image to towards your cluster and that images whatever the desired state image will be always checked to the all the ESXA host in the cluster if there is something there is some drift in the uh, compliance so it can we can uh, uh, you know remediate and apply the uh, whatever changes uh, on particular ESXO so that it, it simplifies the uh, uh, you know like management a consistent uh, configuration across the ESXO host in the cluster there are a lot more features which is there in lifecycle manager so we will be missing uh, update manager plugin from vCenter server in 7.0 and next feature which we will be missing in 7.0 is a VNC basically um, uh, there are some environment which I worked you know like uh, so there are some teams like uh, consider as a development team or some team who need an console access of your virtual machines but we cannot give them the access to vCenter server right there are some cases we can enable the um, uh, we can enable the configuration of virtual machine so that the virtual machine can be accessed using VNC viewer or vnc server so you can just put the uh, just put your uh, ip address of your virtual machine in the vnc and click on ok we can access the console of our virtual machine right so that particular vnc server support from the esxa has been removed in 7.0 so users will no longer be able to connect to the virtual machine using the vnc client okay so instead it is recommended to use uh, uh, a console vm console or vSphere client or esxa host on our remote client which is available from vCenter server or directly uh, connecting to the ESXA host via host client. So we will be missing the VNC server from vSphere 7.0. What is the next? Uh, the sixth one is, so as of now, uh, we have an uh, vCenter server. If you want to uh, provide an user access based on your authentication, we can integrate your vCenter server with an Active Directory. So there are three different uh, methods which is supported. It is like a integrated uh, Windows authentication. Another one is LDAP, something like that. So as of now, this is supported on 7.0. But on the 7.0 release note, it is mentioned that it is like a Windows authentication, integrated Windows authentication is depreciated in 7.0, will be removed in the future release. So in 7.0, which is currently available, but in the future release of 7.0, it will be removed. It. So with the 7.0, they, they added on support for Active Directory Federation services. Still, they have an Active Directory uh, authentication is supported, but it is recommended to use AD over LDAP or um, you know like Identity Federation with the Active Directory Federation services for an vCenter server and ESXA authentication. So integrated Windows authentication is depreciated and it will be missed in the later version of vSphere 7.0, which is the final one, the seventh feature which will be missed. Obviously, this is not a kind of missed, but it is. Uh, depend upon the device size what we choose it right seventh one the final one is so you will miss your local esxi data store if your esxi boot device is less than 128 gb i mean the disk which your esxi is installed if it is less than 128 gb you no longer have a local data store created there are a lot of changes has been uh, made to the esxi partitions on on, on vSphere 7.0 to simplify uh, to simplify the manageability and to have to add more flexibility um, and support for an uh, vmware and third party uh, softwares so 
uh, these are all the changes you can see here if if your media size is less than 4 gb to 10 gb so how, what is your partition size so your partition size will be changed depending upon your uh, esxi installer disk so if it is media size is 10 gb to 32 gb so it will be like uh, your system boot will be 100 mb boot bank will be 0 will be 1 gb so it it keeps changing for the size okay so if your ESXi boot device which is larger than 128 GB so this will be uh, the up to 128 GB will be used for the ESXi partition and whatever the remaining size left out on that particular disk will be created as an VMFS data store which is your local ESXi data store so you will be missing your local data store if your ESXi installer disk is less than 128 GB let's talk about this with a uh, practical example so here is an uh, example i have one esxa host which is less than the boot device which is my uh, local hard disk which is less than 128 gb here is an example i have a uh, local hard disk which is 100 gb which means which is less than 128 gb so once i install a esxa on that particular local disk and i added that esxa to my vcenter server i no longer see a local data store right this is completely new because we never never uh, seen this in the previous version because whatever size it is if you install an esxa on the local disk then we will see a, a local data store on the ESXi host right but in this case we don't see because the ESXi boot device is less than 128 GB the another example I have a ESXi boot device which is greater than 128 GB uh, which means like I have a ESXi host which is local disk is uh, which is 160 GB so as per the earlier uh, um, the image which we discussed so if we have an uh, uh, ESXi boot device which is more than uh, 128 GB so whatever uh, one till 128 GB it will be used for the ESXi partition and whatever left out space will be created as a local data store in this case my uh, disk size is 160 GB so I have a local data store which got created in my ESXi host and its capacity is around 32 GB which is uh, I have a 160 GB uh, minus 128 GB will be used for ESXi partition system partitions so the remaining will be 32 GB will be left out which is created as a data store here so here is an size so data store size will be like disk size minus 120 GB so whatever left out will be created as a data store size so he, this is completely new so you will be missing your local data store if your ESXi boot device is less than 128 GB. This video explains you what are the seven features which will be missing uh, starting from one uh, starting from VSPS 7.0. Uh, so I hope this is informative for you. Thank you, thank you so much uh, for watching this video. Uh, please, please do subscribe to subscribe to our YouTube channel to support us and also click on the bell icon to get the uh, latest update whatever video I posted you will get a notification so you will not miss any video in our YouTube channel I hope this is informative for you thank you thank you so much for your support please stay safe bye bye